Kennedy Muraydi again this morning. Kennedy, good morning. Good to see you from uh, the National Assembly. And uh, just to let you know that in studio we have uh, the Senator from Migori County, Ochila Ayako, and David Oseng, who will be speaking to me. We are still waiting for Nerima Wako. But yesterday, interestingly, we saw the NASA troop in and they had senators with them. What was the reason for that yesterday? Why did they have to have the senators back at the National Assembly? Can I can't get you properly. Please repeat the question. All right. Yesterday, the, uh, we saw while they were trying to get the numbers to the National Assembly to put the question, we saw NASA troop in with the senators. So why was it necessary to have the senators at the National Assembly last afternoon? Oh, well, if it is with regards to the two-thirds gender, then can yesterday was not, they were not there just to make sure that anything or vote, but they were just offering support to Prime Minister Railo, the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga, and they were just there just to make sure that they can marshal up support with regards to the two-thirds gender bill. But what we saw is that they could not reach the requisite numbers, and that is what led the majority leader in the National Assembly, Eden Duale, to defer or to call on the Speaker to defer the vote to next year. And they say that yesterday the stakes were too high that if they would have proceeded to a vote, then probably it would have flopped badly. Yesterday, most male MPs who are in the chambers have defied all the party leaders and they decided that it is time that they stood with what they are saying that Mwanainchi has sent them and they insist that at the ground level and in the, constitu in the constituencies where they do represent it is actually becoming very hard to sell the additional members who are supposed to come into parliament and right now I am joined by one member of parliament. I want to talk to him very fast because they're being called in. There is no quorum. And Moshimua yesterday was an interesting day in parliament. And we did expect that probably members of parliament will come in and actually pass the two-thirds gender bill. What do you think of it? I understand that yesterday we were there and we were expecting this uh, to fulfill as the, constitu uh, the, constitu uh, the constitution of Kenya says, but at the same time uh, the numbers were not enough. So meaning that uh, that is why the majority leader decided to suspend for the, uh, for the time. But maybe let's hope by February we will comply with the constitution. But at the same time I would like to urge our ladies just to let us compete and we will get this uh, uh, easily without uh, struggling this much. But probably what is the message that your constituents are telling you on the ground as you come? There are some members of parliament who are insisting that at the ground level in the constituencies where they do represent, it is a very unpopular bill and that is why they are not supporting it. What are your constituencies, or what are your constituents telling you with regards to this bill? This is what is happening even in the Gambia South constituency since the ones who are insisting that we are not supposed to pass this bill, they are ladies, because they are saying that they do not understand the criteria which will be used by the leaders to nominate those uh, women. At the same time, we being independent, like me, I am an independent candidate. At the same time, how will they, uh, uh, which criteria will they use to nominate these women, the independent ones, meaning that uh, the ones who will be benefiting are the ladies who are in political parties, meaning that uh, that is something which is making the Kenyans not to agree with this uh, bill. At the same time, you can see there was a risk in tax, there was a hacking, uh, and even when we will hand these numbers in the parliament, at the same time we are going to hand another bulk to the uh, common monarchy where they will have to pay more so that they can uh, satisfy them or they can pay the salaries of these uh, nominated members. But uh, it is uh, good as we support the women of this republic, let even them so that uh, they show the, the Kenyans that uh, they are ready to be supported. Let uh, uh, them come out in the arena or pol uh, political arena at the same time to campaign and be elected because in the working on if we can uh, see the situation where we have women as the MPs they are working and that work I understand that it will reciprocate to their to their constituents where they can be elected 
and I understand that uh, those numbers we will get uh, them very easily. The 2000 uh, JDRU, I do not uh, get, uh, I do not see that uh, it is uh, very difficult to attain that number if those ladies they can be allowed to go on the ground and even the conditions to be given whereby the, the, the ground will be neutral, they compete with the men's. Yeah. If John Paul uh, in my hinge, I competed with those guys who ask money because what the ladies are complaining about it is because uh, they are saying that uh, men who they are competing with they has a lot of money that is why they are defeating them on the ground but at the same time why does uh, why does they not implement or uh, use the strategy which I used on the ground there and they can win uh, very easily thank you very much Mishimio. I'll let you go and give quorum to the National Assembly but it is a very interesting debate that he has actually set off and most members of parliament are actually going through that line most male members of parliament are actually questioning the criteria in which uh, these nominated women will come into parliament and Regarding that Kenya is actually a patriarchal society, it is a debate that has kicked off and probably since they are the majority in parliament, it is a question that is coming in and Ken probably, you have a very good panel there in studio and one of the things that has come out from yesterday's, from yesterday's debate here in parliament and one that I will want you guys to tackle is the fact that probably either today or next year when this thing will be gathering pace again, we do expect that Trukana South Member of Parliament, that is James Lomenen, will be bringing a bill before the National Assembly and they will be intending to delete Section 81, that is Article 81B of the Constitution that requires that not more than two-thirds of any elective body should be of the same gender, not just elective body, but also in government circles. It is a question that they will really be tackling. And what is the viability? Will we be requiring a constitution for us to delete that one or under 255 whereby it is the, those under Article 255, it says what requires a referendum and what does not require a referendum. Is the deletion of, it, of Article 81 be one of those things that requires a referendum? Or it is just the 233 members who will be required, as Ken Mijung was telling me yesterday, you require 233 member to defeat the 233 that is required. Probably it is something that you can be looking uh, up to. Ken? It is something that uh, Oceani and Senator there can be tackling right now.